I was approached by one of my co-workers and he told me that he had some stuff I could work on if I was interested. He then tells me that both are steel products, one being a trimmer while the other was a pole saw. Now he did warn me that they had been in a barn for several years and they would be very dirty. When we got to the bed of his truck, this was sitting inside of it. What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by. Today's project is this pole saw from steel and the problem is that it won't start. Now the biggest reason why it won't start is that they didn't take the steps they needed to for long term storage. Now it does run for a bit after putting fuel into the carb's throat so at least we know it starts and runs so more than likely the problem is just the carburetor. But before we take a look at this carb and service it, I want to give it a good cleaning. That way, we don't get dirt in places where it's not supposed to be, like in the fuel tank or in the carb. While I'm cleaning it, I'm going to answer some of your questions that I often get, or at least some of the more interesting ones. I do want to mention that this is the only one I've seen from this brand, and I have to say it's very impressive. Its design is very ingenious, and they also paid attention to the ergonomics as well. I would like to say that this is a commercial-grade tool, and it may be a bit overboard for a homeowner. Now, they don't sell this model anymore, but when it was new, it was several hundred dollars. Now, that's some serious money, and most homeowners simply don't need something like this. I'm often asked what kind of cleaners I use and the answer is whatever I have on hand. As long as it can loosen dirt and some oils, it should be fine to use. For this one, I was using an orange-based spray cleaner that happened to be a bit more diluted than I realized, so it was quite ineffective. I was also experimenting with a crystallized laundry detergent because I didn't want to damage what I was cleaning. Now that didn't go according to plan and I have since moved away from this and have gone with a cheap liquid soap instead. I now use a spray cleaner that's a bit more concentrated and I mainly use it for spots that are covered with just dirt. Now the parts that have oil or varnished gasoline, I will typically use old stale gas or brake cleaner to clean them. If you're using something that's simply not cutting it, just try something else. I would stay away from strong solvents that come in a metal can because you simply don't need them. I have thought about using some sort of steam cleaner, but I don't know if it's worth it because I've gotten most everything clean with spray cleaners, liquid soap, and old gasoline, but using steam would be a bit more friendly to everyone else. However, I feel it would only smear the oils and grease on the surface I'm cleaning as opposed to actually lifting them off the surface. For right now, I'm going to stick with this method until I find a better way. Now, is cleaning really needed before you work on a piece of equipment? And the answer is maybe. If you're trying to track down an oil leak, it would be nice to clean the area first so it's easier to find. The other issue is handling dirty parts will eventually get whatever you end up touching dirty as well. That may not seem like a big deal, but it could make handling smaller parts more difficult. Now you don't have to spend 30 minutes cleaning, but I would suggest wearing some safety glasses and using some compressed air to blow any loose dirt off the area you plan on working on. After that, spray some cleaner on it and then give it a good wipe down. Hopefully those few minutes of cleaning will make it easier to work on and maybe even avoid a few headaches from losing a few of the smaller parts. Now, someone asked me what my favorite brand of equipment was, and the answer is really simple. It's Honda. I think they have a really good build quality, and I enjoy working on them. At least in my point of view, I think their stuff holds its value, so fixing them just makes sense. The coolest part for me is that even though they are a massive company, they're still interested in making small engine equipment, such as mowers, trimmers, and generators. Does that mean their equipment is commercial grade? Not at all. Does it mean you'll never have a problem with their equipment? Of course not. It's okay to disagree with me. You're able to make your own decision as to which brand makes a better product. The only thing I wish they would do is make a two-stroke version of their trimmer and leaf blower. However, with emissions regulations getting tighter, I'll just have to settle for their four-stroke engines instead. Now, I do have two of their trimmers, and I will be making a video about them soon. The problem is that they aren't broken. They just need some attention that their previous owners neglected to give them. Of course, we won't have to worry about such things because in a couple of years, most of the U.S. will have banned gasoline-powered small engines. And if you believe that, well, I feel sorry for you. Now, I cannot see into the future, but I do believe small engines will be around for a very long time. So what about emissions? Well, believe it or not, the amount of pollution from small engines is only a small percentage when compared to automobiles. The reason is the size of the engines and the time that they are used. Smaller engines might pollute more than an automobile, but they are only used for a short period of time. So for companies to convert over to battery-powered tools, I don't think are driven by government regulations, but by greed. Now, I do think there is a huge market for battery-powered equipment, but I think they're mainly playing on people's belief that once car companies do it, everyone else should follow along. The only reason I see the manufacturers changing over is sheer profit. 
Now, I still have faith in people, though, because even though some people will buy electric tools, there will be those who have to buy gas-powered equipment for some reason or another. That means that sort of need the manufacturers want to make money from, and that means gasoline-powered tools will be around for a long time. That is, until they outlaw the sale of gasoline to civilians. I do want to mention that in this video, I am not using water to wash away the dirt I've loosened, and as you can see, I have to use the spray bottle a lot more frequently. Now, the stuff in the bottle is not free, so that means not using water requires another method to get rid of the dirt, either using more cleaner or the use of towels. That brings us to the next comment, which has to do with using water while cleaning equipment. Aren't you worried about getting water in the engine? And the answer is no. As long as I'm careful when pouring or spraying the water on the equipment, I'm really not that worried. If I'm that concerned, I'll just put a bag over the part that I don't want to get wet, or I'll just get it out of the way. The one time I wasn't careful was when I was power washing a mower and I got some water in the muffler, which I think was evident in the video. When I got the mower started, some water came out of the muffler and when it landed on the mower deck, it looked like dark water droplets because of the soot that was in the muffler. In later videos, I just learned to stay away from the muffler or put a bag over it. Unless you hydrolock the engine, if some water does get in it, it will eventually make its way out of it, so don't be afraid to pour some water on it to wash away the dirt you loosened with the cleaners. The only thing I would really watch out for is if you're cleaning a riding mower or anything with an electric starter on it. If water does get inside the starter, it can seriously damage it, which might require you to take it off, dismantle it, and then try and dry it. If it's really bad, you'll just have to replace it, which is not cheap. I haven't cleaned a riding mower on the channel yet, but when I do, you'll see that I stay very far away from the starter. Now the mess around the fuel tank is old gasoline and the soap wasn't doing anything to it. So that's when I tried using some brake cleaner to break it up. If you come across sticky gasoline, you'll have to go to some extreme lengths to clean it up. Now there was some inside the fuel tank, so I used the same method there. Once the tank is done, there are a few weird spots I need to clean, mostly on the shaft in a few tight places. Now this is not typical when cleaning, but this one was absolutely covered in oily grossness everywhere. I didn't ask how I got into this condition, I just deal with them as they come along. It really wasn't too difficult to clean up, it just needed some elbow grease along with some household cleaners to get rid of. You don't need to get it sparkling clean, just clean enough to safely handle. Even though I didn't like how the laundry soap turned out, it still worked just fine. It just took more time than if I used liquid soap alone. So it's finally clean and we're now ready to service the carb and see why it won't start. If you want to see the repair video on this pole saw, click on the video link at the top right of your screen or in the description box. The last thing I want to bring up is that I do read all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. If you take time out of your day to watch these videos and take the extra step in making a comment, the least I can do is take time out of my day to read and respond to them. I really do enjoy reading all of them, and it lets me know what the viewers are thinking. I hope you enjoyed watching me clean this pole saw and answer some of your questions. I do plan on doing more of these Q&As, and if I didn't answer your question, please don't be afraid to ask, and I'll answer them either in the comments, an email, or in a video like this one. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video.